Overall, um, most of the tunnel is in a reasonable condition for its age. Uh, there's large lengths of the tunnel that have no significant defects. However, there are a number of areas with loose brickwork, open joints, minor water ingress, spalling of the, of the brickwork due to concentration of uh, compressive stress, which is blowing the faces off the brickwork. Um, the tunnel is distorting at those points, but these aren't significant defects that can't be managed. However, there are two localised areas where there are small collapses. One of these has been relatively unchanged since it developed, and the other one, uh, the larger one, structurally it hasn't changed, but there is more material coming loose at the back of the tunnel. So those two areas need particular attention. The problem is to, to try and derive a solution that's appropriate for each separate section of the tunnel. So I think you'll get some areas of the tunnel which will do nothing, some areas where we'll need to do some water management, some areas where we'll need to do repointing, some brick replacement, other areas where stress is starting to develop, we'll perhaps look at a spray concrete lining to either part or all of the structure. And then in the two for areas of collapse, we'll have to come up with something specialist that can be done firstly safely. How do we tackle it? How do we get in there? And how do we actually stabilise it? We've spoken to um, a specialist tunnelling contractor um, we've taken a, a survey that we've produced, a survey that we've checked. Um, we've listed all the defects and we've looked at each defect and how it can be solved. And uh, the specialist tunnelling contractor has taken that list and has put prices to all the items on it. I've, I've been seeing other problems of similar nature uh, developing elsewhere and seeing the way that some contractors have approached solutions safely and carefully. Then I do know that it can be done.